This is something that we must stop to save America. Dolores Tucker is at war. We'll rather go to jail and have our children being slaughtered in the street. And it's gangster rap she's got in her crosshair. That's what's called gangster rap. Hardcore, street tough lyrics of Los Angeles based groups like Ice T and Nick Attitude or NWA. Their angry style with its racial slurs, deliberately shocking lyrics, and brutal images of life in South Central LA have stirred controversy even as they have sent rap sales soaring. As a youth in the late 80s, early 90s, it was pretty difficult to avoid the ubiquitous culture that hip hop had become. And as a Bible thumping young guy trying to be a Christian in that time, I was kind of told or it was implied to stay away from hip hop, that it was inherently not good for young people. But when I came across this particular album and I heard the song Can't Trust It, I was hooked. And when I heard their music, Public Enemy, what I heard instead of the lyrics was a call to that kind of inner rage that most if not all black men in America have to deal with. Public Enemy dealt with it in a very constructive manner. Other rappers, maybe not so much so tactfully, but they still had a message that need to be heard. Cops were not the only objects of derision. Women were too. More controversy was caused by the frequent use of words like bitch and Still, gangster rap continues to sell. At the time, I don't think I knew anyone that didn't listen to Tupac. He represented this beautiful dichotomy of black men who won, saw a lucrative business that was about to open up, and if they were business savvy, they could use it, even if it was a little bit dangerous, as life was probably dangerous anyways for many disadvantaged economically, you know, black male youth, you could get rich very quickly. And the second half of that is, it was an avenue to vent black male rage at the black American condition. Something that no matter what economic class you come from as a black man, you deal with it from certain teachers looking at you a certain way to getting on an elevator and seeing a woman switch her purse from one side to the other, to getting pulled over and being incredibly afraid of the police, or even having to play a certain kind of character in order to get young girls to like you. So when he spoke about C. Dolores Tucker, this is something that we must stop to save America. Dolores Tucker is at war. We'll rather go to jail and have our children being slaughtered in the street. And it's gangster rap she's got in her crosshair. Going to Congress talking about stopping gangster rap, which would basically be cutting off the spigot for their income, he said, instead of trying to help an end, you destroy a brother. Worse than the others, Bill Clinton, Mr. Bob Dole. You're too old to understand the way the game's told. You're lame, so I gotta hit you with the hot facts. Once I'm released, I'm making millions. Ninja, top that. We strongly believe that it is our Christian, moral, and social responsibility to speak out against evil forces. That it is that opposition that is creating the first real backlash to the music. A backlash born in the same place that gave birth to rap, the black community. Recently, opponents of hardcore rap gathered at New York City's Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem to say, enough is enough. It is not all right for our black male children to grow up and be drug dealers, gang bashers, or stick up kids. But your negative lyrics and videos are telling them that it's all right. Rap music is is destroying the black community? Yes, it is. I tell Dolores Tucker she needs to come to my neighborhood and she needs to, she needs to go to um, um, the other black neighborhoods and, and see what it is that's destroying it if she feels like it's music. Many of those who came to protest were primarily middle-class adults, educated working people and parents who were insulted by the negative stereotypes of blacks portrayed in the rap lyrics. As someone who's lived my life in this particular country for almost half of it, I've learned the importance of seeing life in shades of gray and listening to the conversation from the speakers here, they have a point. The lyrics in the hip hop were not the best lyrics and many young people were expressing themselves in a way that probably was either A, not very constructive or B, which is what my point is going to be in this particular video, something that is borderline embarrassing for the 
educated black community. And instead of talking about what the real problem was, the conversation kind of turned towards, you're embarrassing us. But negative rap is a slap in our faces. It lets everybody know to a certain extent that we as black people must have low self-esteem, no respect for ourselves or anyone else, and we just don't care who we hurt as long as we're making the dollar. Of course, you can hear a level of privilege in her saying that it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're making a dollar if you're not in immediate need of a dollar. But this does not address the underlying problem that was being expressed in rap music. They needed the dollar. What do you say to critics who say the kind of violent rap that you and others do is hurting, even destroying, some people say, a lot of black communities? If they feel like it's my music that's causing, you know, trouble in, in the ghetto, then, then what was it before it was my music, you know? Of course, when people were talking about why are they talking like this, there was a reason why. But you're going to hear my senator address the real elephant in the room that got people really riled up. I've had to endure that ugly N-word for some 400 years now, and enough is enough. Black women, black women have been the objects of too much violence. They've been the objects of too much abuse and too much misuse and enough is enough. I'm here because I'm outraged at the denigration of black women. And as a uh, father, as a uh, son, uh, my mother, my sisters, our wives, our girlfriends have been denigrated and these are against the values of our community. To me, the need to think in shades of gray is pretty obvious. If I grow up in a family where my mom makes cookies and we have Christmas where we're all together, my father is a professional and we go on trips to Disney World, my view of hip hop music is that it is going to pull our quote unquote culture down. Do you think we need to encourage young men who are prone to violence to do violence? Former um, Education Secretary Bill say, Bennett. What we are saying is, we don't think this is good. Um, they say, we have a right to do this. We say, we know. We know about your right to do it. Now, we're trying to you know, run a society here. We're trying to raise children here. But what of the kid that is living in a different set of circumstances? And that's all he knows. And his situation is the opposite of that. That is the other side that never got addressed in this conversation. Community. Others argue that if Reverend Butts was going after anyone, it should have been the record companies themselves that negative rappers were merely telling it like it is. We know what's right, we know what's wrong, and music is not the killer, it's not the ill. The ill is the streets that we are forced to live like rats on. The ill is the projects we are forced to live in. I like to think of America as perfectly imperfect. I'm proud of America. America has done some things really, really, really right, but it's also done some things really, really, really wrong. And out of America, we were bred a group of people that were sold as items, as products. And we were owned and mishandled and treated like dogs and then released and had to find a way to survive in a country that had redlining and Jim Crow and all of these things. And in the 1990s, when you have this new art form becoming the new mainstream, what you're going to get is an imperfect, perfect expression of the black experience. It's been suggested that what appeals to both black and white teenagers is hardcore rap's anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian messages. But some psychologists suggest that the appeal for white males, the group that buys the most CDs, goes beyond teenage rebelliousness. They argue that the appeal to that group stems from the validation of their worst stereotypes about black people. When you speak of shades of gray, Eminem immediately comes to my mind. There are people that will argue he's the best ever, he's the best white rapper ever, that's immaterial to me. But if you listen to Jay-Z's song, Renegade, he clearly outdoes Jay-Z in that song. But his desperation is born of the same desperation that fueled gangster rap. I need to get to this money. In this kind of economic environment, in an imperfect country, you're going to get 
NWAs and Eminems and Tupacs and Biggie Smalls because they got to get to the money, period. Because that's what America runs on. I understand frustration, but brother, if your back is burdened by the whip of white racism and you're taking it out on the black woman, then your anger and your frustration, though it may be legitimate, it is misguided and misdirected. This is music that I think is actually teaching children to be engaged in criminal activity. You're making it sound like these are these are little saints walking around and then they hear this no. terrible music and they start shooting each other. I don't believe it. Well, let me just say this. Children are great imitators. Would you believe that? Yes. All right, the children are listening to it. How about this? They don't have fathers either. Almost all of the ones you're talking about. That's Maybe correct. that's and the that's problem. Why, and that, that is a problem. But that problem makes them more vulnerable to this music. Looking back on this conversation, what's so incredibly frustrating about it is that if you're looking at it right, you can understand why it didn't go anywhere. There's one group of people who are saying, you're kind of embarrassing the black race. You guys should stop doing this behavior that is not what we deem as acceptable. And then you have this group of people that are struggling to survive. And they're looking for any way they can to make a dollar out of 15 cents, to quote Tupac. And here are people who are, as they said, middle class, well off, saying, no, don't do that. And that might be one of the things that caused some of the gulfs that we have today in our voting patterns. Because if you don't have any money, then why are you going to come and tell me what I can't do to get money when I need it? And you're going to hear this summed up perfectly with this next gentleman. But Bill Stephanie, a record producer who also doesn't like a lot of rap's nastiness, says if you want to understand why the music can be so rough, just look at where it comes from. I think we should do something because some of these records and images do scare me. The idea is that if you want to change the music, change the street. But that's a little too difficult for a lot of people, and that requires a lot of hard work. It's a hell of a lot easier to get on TV and talk about rap records than to come up with very definite programs on how to fix what ails us. Looking back on it, it's so obvious what's missing from this conversation, and this gentleman nails it. Nobody spoke to the underlying causes of where this frustration was coming from. No one's ever really addressed it. And so for the guys who said, you know what, if I could do this gangster rap thing and get a couple of dollars together, maybe my family can eat, my mom can eat, I can get my mom out of this difficult circumstance. Or better yet, this is the seed money I can use to build my movie career or my movie studio. Nobody ever spoke about the economic opportunities that were lacking. And that's why the grandstanding is so frustrating looking back on it from now. When I hear of Dr. Tia San Johnson's 18 point political plan for black men, he's speaking to the political side of it. He's not saying, hey, you black men, you guys suck, you're terrible, you should do better. With what resources, with what help, with what opportunities? The opportunities weren't there, so guys used the opportunities that they had. That simple. And when people wag their finger at you for making do with what you have, then those people are going to say, well, how are you going to be a political block like us if you can't see that our underlying need is the cause of this rap music? Looking back on it is fascinating because you can see the hole in the argument and looking at it through shades of gray, both sides were right, but they never addressed why there are so many rappers willing to come out and make certain kinds of music. Because quite and simply put, they were hungry and all they were offering was a finger wagging and not food to eat or money to pay for it. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you next video. Take care.